live from Brooklyn. It's Monday night. And I'd love to introduce the crew to you. First off, from Nashville, Tennessee, we have Mr. John Tudor. Yes, sir, right here, Don. Hello, everybody. Michael and Dana, good to be on tonight. And then, speaking of Michael and Dana, we'll slip on down to Houston and say, hello, Mike and Dana. That's home of Astros, Houston. Hi, y'all. God bless. And then it's back to Brooklyn, where I'm still dodging bullets. And the car horns. Oh. Oh, well. Dana, would you like to open us up with a word of prayer? Sure. Thank you, Don. Father God, we just thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us today, that we can just honor men and women in the military that have died for our freedom. But we thank you most of all, Father God, for your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, for all that he has done and still does for us. For he will always be our hero and our number one hero. I'm so thankful, Father God, that you made us a family and you called us out. I thank you for wisdom and knowledge and just growth within your word, Father God, so that we can walk and talk and do the things that you want us to do. Thank you, Father God, for your mercy and your grace and your forgiveness upon our lives. And always are ready and, and able to rescue us and heal us and direct us and guide us in a godly path as we look to you and your son. Thank you, Father God, for everyone here and the people that wanted to be here, your precious believers. I thank you for their lives and ours, Father God, and for just great healing and protection around us all. We just love you so much, and I just thank you for the word that will be taught tonight that our ears and our eyes are open to receive and that we can go forth and share your word that is so alive. Just thank you. I just over, uh, I'm just humbled to be in your presence and to be with my brothers and sisters, your children. So thank you for just us all having a really good time together and in our hearts and your love. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 All right, so Mr. Michael, I hear you want to continue on with the 40 days. Hey, it might take me 40 days to get through the 40 days. This stuff is so cool and so, so much that... Uh, we're covering that can be covered in, in much more thoroughly than what we're doing. I encourage you all not only to do that, but to look at the teaching itself and, and make it better. Make it better for the next generation or for this generation if you work fast. I'm just trying to point out something that God's working on my heart uh, that that time period that Jesus Christ was here on earth. Um, last week when we left off, we were about midday on Sunday and it took a, it's taken us, <laughs> it's taken us about two hours to get to midday on Sunday from the resurrection with some of the explanations. And I can't illustrate enough that this is just some of the explanations. The more you look into God's word, the more precious and deep it becomes because it's, it's the word of life. Um, I want to reiterate a few things before we get up to the chart and then get back to the men on the road to Emmaus. 
So just rewinding a little bit, Mark chapter 16, verse 5, the women uh, 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 coming back from the tomb. Uh, in verse 5, it says, as they, were, uh, as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting at the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples, plural this time, and Peter, uh, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. Very important direction here now to Galilee, where you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Now, we illustrated that this doesn't contradict any of the other scriptures where they went back and told the apostles. But uh, one thing I did bring up concerning this is the fact that a lot of the uh, early manuscripts and some other ancient writers do not have verse 9 through 20, which really makes a lot of sense when you think about it. And I'm going to try to give a, a little explanation as to why that may be very important. Mark is written about Jesus Christ as a servant of God. It wouldn't be uh, wrong for it to end here without witness to the resurrection. Uh, and the state that he has risen, but no witnesses, because Jesus Christ raised from the dead is not that humbling sacrifice that they hung on a tree anymore. He is the most powerful being next to God in all of creation. God has set him up that way. He is the man. So just something to think about with some of the stuff that we've covered. Uh, so the women were at the tomb. Mary, by this time, Mary is on her way back to Peter the second time. And the apostles, Luke 24, 9, picks up. And when they came back from the tomb. Now, when it says they here in Luke's account, it's talking about all the women that have witnessed Jesus Christ raised from the dead. Uh, so uh, they told all these things to the 11, very, very specifically. And the others, so there's more than just the 11. We do know Thomas is not there yet from the way the scriptures are put together. It was Mary Magdalene, Jonah, Mary the mother of James, and others with them who told this to the apostles. Doesn't necessarily mean the 12. Apostles, can, can is anybody who is the designated church builder or a witness to the resurrected Lord. But they, these apostles, did not believe the women because their words seemed to be like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran back to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the stripes, lay, uh, uh, the strips of linen laying by themselves, and he went away wondering. This is the second time Peter's been there, but this time it's himself. And I would say this is possibly the account that Paul gives in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 when Peter saw the Lord. And, and as we progress in Luke, it actually says Peter has witnessed the resurrection by the time these men of Emmaus get there. So this is not, this is still Sunday, the 18th of Nisan. Uh, it is past sunset. Uh, the, uh, everybody's back. There's a, there's a lot more people involved by now. I think that the men from Emmaus are part of this larger group that the women bear witness to because it says that in their account that we're going to read again uh, here in a minute as soon as we catch up. So they're all back at the tomb, possibly the account. What we've gone through, now one thing I've gone through, by the way, is I, I looked at this chart on film last week, and I thought, oh, that's a little bit hard to see. Uh, it's, uh, you'd really have to squint your eyes, pause the page. So what did I do? I blew it up uh, so that you may be able to see where we are so far. So 
Uh, starting at the top right hand corner, the observation of the women and how they were laid. Uh, they're, they're at the tomb. It's on Wednesday before sunset. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all give an account of this. The next day is the day of preparation, which was a Sabbath, a special Sabbath. And the only account is given is what the Pharisees do as far as requesting a guard be put at the tomb for three days because they knew the prophecy and they didn't want somebody to come and steal the body and say that he was risen. Uh, the next day, which is Friday after this Thursday Sabbath, we got the women preparing the spices. And it's a large group of women, which apparently includes Mary Magdalene as, as part of the group uh, after the high Sabbath day. Uh, sometimes uh, on the next day, Saturday Sabbath, when they would have all rested, which is documented in Luke 23, 56, Jesus Christ rose from the dead sometimes after 3 p.m. The visit of the women at the tomb, this is uh, uh, of the weekly Sabbath, the, uh, uh, on the first, as the first day was beginning to dawn, so it would have been late in the evening on Saturday. The tomb probably the tomb is empty, but the guards and the and the stone is still there. We've illustrated that from Matthew 21. Saturday again, late in the day, probably after sunset, they're checking things out. Then it gives the account in Luke 28, 2 through 4 about the violent earthquake where the tomb is uh, the stone is rolled away and the soldiers quake in fear. And the next account we have is Mary Magdalene going very early in the morning to check out the tomb, and it's empty. And the stone is rolled away, and there's obviously no guards there. That's in John 20, 1 through 10. She goes to the disciples. She gets two out of two of them out of a stone cold sleep. I suggested to you that it was not Peter and John, that it was Peter and the man that Jesus rose from the dead that is called his friend, his phileo friend, Lazarus. Uh, by the terminology that's used for friend there, uh, we've got Mary and Peter and Lazarus returning to the tomb, them witnessing in Mark 16, 9 through 11, and in John 20, 11 through 17, that the tomb is empty and that Mary wasn't lying. The, the body was gone. They still didn't understand he was raised. The two disciples go back, Peter and Lazarus. Mary hangs around and gets witnessed to by an angel. And then it is the first visual sight by a human of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. And that was Mary Magdalene. Beautiful account. Uh, next, we've got the after sunrise. The women that have the spices going back. So Mary's going back to tell the, the disciples she saw the Lord. Uh, on her way back to Bethany this time, second time going back, uh, she uh, the, the women are coming, wanting to know who's going to roll the stone away, finding out the stone had already been rolled away. Uh, they get addressed by the angel witnessing to them, telling them to go and tell the disciples to meet Jesus in Galilee, just as he told them. And then you've got the departure of the women on the way back to go tell the disciples. So you've got Mary heading back from one point in time, these girls heading back from another point in time to, to communicate to the disciples. Those women meet the Lord, and he witnesses to them. Big difference between when Mary met him and they, as far as his direction, Mary stopped clinging on me. I have to ascend to the Father. We believe that that is him fulfilling his priestly duties. As to where when they met him and they worshipped him and they clung on to his feet, he had already accomplished that. Uh, they're all there, which was what we just read, uh, telling the disciples and Peter uh, we also have the account in Matthew 28, 11 through 15 of the watchers report, the guards going back and reporting to the uh, Jewish authorities that uh, what had happened with the stone and that the body was gone. And then you've got Peter going back by himself without anyone else 
in the Luke 24, 12, and we also have an account of that by Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 5. So there's a big jump between John 20, 18. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that uh, he had said to these things, and then 19 goes on the evening of the first day of the week. Well, there's a, there's a lot that happens before this evening, and we're going to get back to it, but we want to go into this evening. Uh, in Matthew 28, 11, we, uh, we, st or we start with, while the women were on their way, we end with, so the soldiers, uh, uh, it's the account of the soldiers going and reporting the incident to them. I guess we should read through this. We, didn't, we haven't read this yet. Verse 11 says, while the women were on their way back to the apostles, some of the guards went to the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened when the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan. They gave the soldiers a large sum of money. Now, Matthew would have had to get gotten privy to this at a later date because there's a lot of people from the uh, priesthood and from uh, that were believers, that became believers after the day of Pentecost. So this is an unusual for him to gather this information. 13, telling them, you are to say his disciples came during the night and sold him away while you were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And the story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. So that's that account there. <clears throat> Again, Mark 16 talks about appearances to two of them. It talks about, and everybody wants to take this, uh, this Mark record after verse 9 and forward and, and make it sound like all kind of other things and well like i said it doesn't directly contradict anything it does cause a lot of the confusion to the order and there's still the manuscripts that do not have it so it's very possible that it was added at a later date or taken from notes that were actually on the page and we want to get to luke 24 13 and it says now on the same day uh this is a very, um, this is, uh, God, I would have given a lot to be one of these two men. Uh, now on the same day, two of them were going to the village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. Now, you know, seven mile, that's a, that's a, that's a good uh, four or five hour walk uh, in those days, probably longer because they did walk at a very patient rate. Uh, in those days as they traveled. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. So these guys aren't, uh, they know what's been going on. As they were talking and discussing these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked among, along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. Uh, this is pretty cool. They, they didn't recognize him for however Christ manifested that and it was for purpose or if it's just the fact that he was clean and shaven and uh, and, and like I said when I shave off the old winter beard and these Jews if you don't know anything about them they they have a Jewish beard they, they didn't cut that thing that was a it was part of their custom but they uh, he asked them what are you discussing together as you walk along they stood Still, their faces downcast, one of them named Cleopas asked him, Are you only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? This is a very important record because this is not something that was among a very small group of people. This man, Jesus, has been stirring up the community for about 62 weeks. I mean, literally stirring it up. Started with his cousin John. These guys were well known. The miracles and everything that was taking place as a witness. And, and these men's testimony tell the thinking of the time. These men are a great witness to how a lot of people would have been thinking. And he asked them, what things? Now, there's two schools of thought here. What things is he's been dead for three days and three nights. He really doesn't know what's been going on while he was dead because he was stone cold dead. He wasn't 
floating around. He was dead, lifeless. You remember what it was like before you were born? Well, that's what it's like after you're dead. And Jesus was like that, dead, unconscious, no sense of time. He was dead. So this could be a very genuine question. I originally read it as him kind of playing with them, saying, you know, what do you know? Uh, which is not be it's not a bad thing to do is ask a question of a person when you want to find out where their heads are but they get right to it about Jesus of Nazareth they replied he was a prophet that's a that's a that's a statement powerful in word and deed before God and all the people They're, they they look, they look at the heart here the chief priest and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we hoped that he was the one. They, they looked forward to the coming. They believed he was God's promised seed that Abraham spoke of, that he was the Redeemer, the reason for the law given to Moses. He was the one raised up in the desert. We hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel, the promised redeemer. And what is more is, it is the third day since this took place. Now, okay, third day. What, what's significant about the third day? Well, that's how many time, days and nights he was supposed to be in the grave, right? <clears throat> it's been the third day since this has taken place, Sunday. Uh, in addition... Some of the women amazed us. They were witnesses to what the women said. Look at this. They were there that morning. They're on their way back home. But these women, what did they do? They went to the tomb early in the morning, but did not find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of an angel who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. So, so they knew about all of this they were around these group of believers in bethany that had gotten the news back from the women but they did not see jesus so they weren't around long enough to hear a witness of the resurrection so he said to them he jesus said unto them how foolish you are <laughs> how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets had spoken, the word people, he, he hit them with the written word of God. That's what we have to do, keep each other sharp on the word. That's why I challenge you, look at this. <clears throat> make it your own and make it better. You have your own flavor to put into this. You have your own tenacity, things that you see, things that you can study that I can't. That I, and as we come together, we're bigger. Did not the Messiah have to suffer, verse 26? these things, and then enter in his glory, always the sufferings and the glory, the sufferings and the glory. That's what the whole Hebrew scripture is taught about, the sufferings and the glory. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all of them, all of the scriptures concerning himself. You want to talk about a red thread episode. Gee, if you want to talk about the red thread giving you the story of the red thread, this was been phenomenal. You can do that today. Go to the scriptures and search them. Look for Jesus because he's prophesied about. He's not alive before he was born. That's crazy. He's prophesied about God, prophesied about the coming son. Verse 28, and they approached the village to which they were going. So they're, 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 they're in Emmaus. Uh, Jesus continued on as if he were go would going further, but they urged him strongly. So he acted like he was going to just continue traveling. Stay with us. <laughs> you ever do that? You, somebody's burning the word so much into your soul that you stay with us. <laughs> I want to hang with you, man. They still don't recognize who he is. For it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. A lot of hospitality here. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, sitting down for the evening breaking of the bread, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them. 
Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. So cool. Dinner. Fellowship and dinner. And he disappeared from their sight. <laughs> Poof. That body, that resurrected body, has some additional characteristics that our physical bodies don't naturally have right now. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures? What does Christ do for you as you commune with him? Spirit to spirit communication. He opens the scriptures. You can't learn the word if you ain't born again. People need to, people that are born again of God's spirit need to help instruct others who want to get born again and those who are less schooled in the scriptures. Spirit communication. 33, they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. They're hightailing it back to the, they just saw the Lord Jesus Christ. They're witnesses. They're going back. There they found the 11 and those with them assembled together and saying it is true the lord has arisen and appeared to who yes, the two, two men. simon simon seen the lord in between the time that we just read with the record and now simon seen jesus and the and, and the two told what had happened on the road and how jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread so you got all this stuff going on, all these witnesses, Simon, the two guys, all the women. It's late in the evening. They're all back in the Jerusalem, Judea, Bethany area probably. Uh, Mark 16, 13 talks about this stuff. But again, uh, you can read it and, and you can decide for yourself about exactly how, how much placement it deserves in here. Uh, but... Uh, it, it's it's questionable uh but luke 24 49 ain't questionable it's in all the manuscripts and we want to get straight here because while they were still talking now this is pretty late in the evening because they sat down with jesus for uh probably a supper and so it's it's pretty late by the time they get from emmaus back to uh bethany to talk to the disciples and witness to them while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. That's a heck of an introduction. Now, they're, they're behind locked doors, we're going to see from another record. So, just like he disappeared from the dinner table, he reappears here with these disciples, which include the men from Emmaus and the ones that were gathered together that evening. They were startled and frightened, thinking they had seen a spirit, the text reads. He said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost doesn't have flesh and bones, as, it, as you see. He's witnessing. He's showing them. He's, he's communicating them with touch and with visual so that they can see he's alive. And he's the same guy that went down. 40, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe because of the joy and amazement, did you ever get so stunned by truth that you you were just breathless? You were, your, your, your mind couldn't comprehend the reality of what was happening around you because it was just such a stunning a thing? Well, this is, they're, they're seeing a dead man <laughs> that's talking to him. It was murdered. Uh, and what, and this, next, this, this, this next one drives me nuts. It's, what, what do you do when people just don't believe? Get anything to eat? <laughs> Get anything here to eat? He, he's going to eat. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he did what? He took it and ate it in their presence. That's very significant that Luke puts this in here. Because it's part of the witness to show, hey, I'm a guy, I'm not a ghost, I'm here to fellowship, I'm here to witness, I'm here to instruct you. I've been raised from the dead. This is Sunday evening. The Lord had quite a busy day so far, but watch what happens in these next section. 
I'm going to read through it, and we're going to go back over it. He said unto them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. He speaks in terms of the past of him being still with them because that was another life ago. <laughs> that was a lifetime ago. Uh, he also spoke of himself when he was before his death and resurrection, rhetorically about him in the future. But we're going to talk about that later. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. I love the way Jesus breaks down the scriptures here. Three sections, the law of Moses, prophets, and the Psalms. And he tells them everything that was written about me. There's a lot in there written about him. The book is, the subject of the book is about Jesus Christ from Genesis 3.15 all the way through to the coming of our God at the end of it. It's Jesus Christ that accomplished what's necessary for the salvation of mankind and the universe. Verse 45, then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer in what? Raised from the dead on the third day. The sufferings and the glory. And this, now this is what is written. Listen to this. This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and raise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Now that that is a, a lot of people want to make that part of the secret, but I'm going to show you from the text that that's not. That's, that is going through the, he's summarizing the prophecies of his death and resurrection, the witnessing of the, through the tribulation period, all the way into the millennial period when he establishes his kingdom on earth. That's what's written. That's what all the, the all nations that we've heard about uh, in the past has been. But that's not what's happening now. Verse 48 in this context says, you are witnesses of these things. And verse 49 says, I am going to send you what my father has promised. So 48 should end the thought. And a, a lot of translations do this. And that's why I'm, I'm staying with this NIV here. Because it's in 49, it says, I am going to send you what my father has promised. And that's a very poor translation. And the reason why it's very poor is because people are not giving the prepositions and the conjunctions their due respect in this section of Scripture. And I want to try to show that to you. And it's, then it says, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power up on high. Now, Young's starts 49, and it says, and Young's literal is, is pretty literal to the text. It says, and lo, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. And lo. Now, in looking at and lo a little bit closer in the actual Greek understanding, uh, we have to look at the whole context of what we're dealing with here. Because he opened their minds, right? He's, he's teaching them the word of God. The spirit that now energizes his body is teaching their fleshly mind, their, 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 their mind, and their, their whole being, their soul, these things. So he's showing them the scriptures, and he does this over and over and over again. He did it on the Mount of Transfiguration. He did it on the shore of Galilee, constantly trying to show them the scriptures. And then he gets down to this part about what the scriptures say. Uh, so he said to them, it is written that Christ should suffer and rise out from among the dead. That's the text. It's not right. It's rise out from among the dead because everybody else is still dead, and he came out from among them. He's the only one that has been raisin, risen, <laughs> risen. He's the only raisin. In the, he's the only one that has been risen from the dead and stayed that way in human history. Nobody else has been. Everybody that's, even Lazarus, Lazarus died again, believe it or not. Everybody else is dead until the Lord's return. But this section here is, is very, very important to break down. So this word that is in front here in, in the young, Young's literal, this and lo, and lo is a very, very, very cool conjunction. Of course, 
the and is just a conjunction, which stimulates the most widely used conjunction uh, in the uh, word. But this is new information, this 49, and that's why we really have to look at it because Luke reiterates this, and we're going to get to it later on. This is Sunday night. Understand that too. This is Sunday night, and he's giving this information out on Sunday night to them. He's opening their mind to the scriptures about what has written, and he's giving them something different. And this is what that second word in there, 2400, look it up. And look at the LLX too, the, the LXX, uh, to properly understand the imperative of the aristic middle. I'm going to explain this. <laughs> All right? Because... This is a this is a word that should be better to translate behold. And it, it especially calls attention to what follows. You can see the root word uh, ID, which is 2396. Uh, I'm gonna read what uh, the REV commentary reads about this. The word look should be uh, translated in this section, which they do. Uh, the second person singular heuristic middle imperative of Ida, uh, or idiom. It, 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 as it does in the verse and many other in the New Testament, it is used as a demonstrative particle to draw our attention to something. To be strictly literal, we would, uh, we would strike with a translation that retains the meaning of behold, see, look. Uh, there's an emphasis put here with an exclamation with this word. Uh, so I like, to, I like to use my Americanism. Literally, we're verse 49. He's telling them all these wonderful things about what is written in the, of him in the scriptures, which is phenomenal. I mean, it's breathtaking when you start realizing the prophecies about Jesus Christ out of the Hebrew writings. And he's getting to 49 and he's saying, but check this out. I'm going to send what my father has promised. Now, what promise is he talking about here? This word is not used anywhere in the writings before the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This word that he uses for promise here is in Acts and I'm going to start in Acts chapter 1 and here in Luke 24, and it continues on through the polineal uh, writings, and then it disappears again, not to be mentioned in the book of Revelation. This is a very specific announcement. This promise is a very specific announcement, and we would do good to really pay attention to the change that's taking place here. I'm going to read the REV as they pick up this exclamation and their translation. In verse 44, it reads, And he said unto them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled that are written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Remember when Luke wrote all that Jesus both began to do and teach? That do and teach is an instruction to cause people to learn. Your spirit has the ability, your believing. When you manifest the manifestation of believing, part of that manifestation is right here explained by the Lord himself. You have the ability to cause people to understand Scripture. That's what believing is. That's what the manifestation of believing is. Not only for yourself, but for others. You have the ability to manifest that. Verse 45, he opened their mind to understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, thus it is written that Christ would suffer and rise out from among the dead the third day. Verse 47, and in conjunction with that, this is all written in the Hebrew writings, that repentance and forgiveness. What did John teach? Be baptized and, right? Repent, be baptized. And that's what he taught. Because one was coming, it's going to baptize you in spirit. Well, they expected that of you at the resurrection. Remember Martha, when Lazarus was dead? He said, Jesus Christ said, he will live. 
And she said, I know that he's going to be raised from the dead. <laughs> that's what they were expecting. That's the that's the outcome of this. But during this during this tribulation and during this ministry of Jesus Christ on earth, and afterwards the tribulation, repentance and forgiveness of sins proclaim in his name to all nations. Beginning in Jerusalem, there's an angel sounding out, echoing in the book of Revelation. The, the gospel, the good news of this repentance. You are witnesses of these things, period. That's, that's the Hebrew writings. That's what we're supposed to learn from. But check this out. And look, he said. And look, this is an add-on <clears throat> in conjunction with that. But this is a totally... I'm em this is emphasizing a totally new ideal. A, a This is an exclamation. It's like an also at the beginning of the text. But it's, it's, and look, look at this. Look at this. I am going to send the promise of my Father upon you. But you stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. There's going to be some time take place. But he's introducing this promise of the Father the very first day of his resurrection that evening. And he's going to continue that all the way up to his ascension. Go to John chapter 20, verse 8, uh, where we, uh, 18. 18, thank you. Uh, Mary Magdalene went to the disciples and told them the news. That's where we left off. We put the, the account of the men from Emmaus. Let's look at this evening from John's perspective in verse 19 on the evening. Of the first day of the week, a little bit more detail in here. The disciples were together, how? With the doors locked. <laughs> Why? They were afraid of the Jewish leaders. <laughs> the Jewish leaders were headhunting. They want to they put some of these guys up for stealing the body of Jesus. Uh, they're, I mean, what did they, they just paid off a whole bunch of, anyways, not good to be a, a believer at this moment. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be unto you. Again, behind locked doors, folks. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again, Jesus said, Peace be unto you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. He started teaching this from the get-go. And with that, he... Can you hear that? He breathed on them. Some of them like to make it, he breathed in. So it could be, either way, there's an exercise going on here. And what did he say to them? Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive Holy Spirit. He's giving them instruction the very first day of his resurrection about something that is not going to happen yet for 50 days. 10 days after his ascension. He's giving them instruction Sunday evening. He's going to continue to do this for 40 days to get them geared up for this day when they are going to breathe in and receive this power from on high. Verse 23, if you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Uh, John, uh, again, I want to read this again, but I want uh, I just want I want to explain this because this breathe in or breathe on them is huge when it comes to a person manifesting Holy Spirit. It's the first instruction we see from the Lord Himself about what they did and what they, how they received on the day of Pentecost into manifestation what they had. A lot of people look this over. A lot of people say that they can't speak in tongues. It's a special gift. A lot of people say they can't manifest. The manifestations died off of the apostles. That stuff's bunk. And when you are when you are working with the Lord and trying to manifest that power, this rule still stands clear in every circumstance. Speaking in tongues, manifesting power from on high and miracles of signs and wonders, healing people. Just take a deep breath and be with the Lord. If you haven't manifested, Jesus said unto him, Peace be unto you as the Father has sent me, even though I have sent you. Then he said unto them, 
Then he breathed on them, or he breathed in, and he said, "Receive the Holy Spirit." We're going to look in a few day, uh, in a couple of weeks at the day of Pentecost when they actually do this and what they do. They they start speaking in tongues, and there's a whole group of people there that are hearing this. You can do this. This is the instructions. It still works today, some two thousand years later, just like it worked for them on the day of Pentecost when they received. And if you are born again and you haven't done this, you can do this. And if you need help, you got some wonderful people, uh, Don, Dana, me, and John, uh, a bunch of other people with this ministry that will instruct you and help you with this. So don't lose this. This instruction came Sunday night, folks. He's getting them prepared for something that was not prophesied in those Hebrew writings. He's getting them ready to receive power from on high. <clears throat> I mean, this is a this should this stuff should be amazing to believers, but nobody's emphasizing this. Nobody's carrying this along from generation to generation. This power that believers have, the manifest spirit that they have, the life that they've been given once they've confessed with their mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believed in their heart, God raised them from the dead. It's not getting taught. We have to teach it. We have to read the word. That's what the word said. Anyways, we're going to get back to that later on in the teachings in a couple of weeks. But anyways, John 20, 24. Now Thomas, also known as Deutimus, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the others told him, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. Ah, later that week. So we have just jumped a week in John's revelation. Now remember, Jesus is trying to get these guys where? What was the original revelation? Let's get everybody to Galilee. <laughs> Jesus has got a thing planned for Galilee. <laughs> He's got a big meet coming up, and he wants everybody there. Here we are a week later. Where? Bethany. <laughs> because they, it's, it's hard. Progressive revelation isn't always because the Lord's not willing to show. The Lord showed Paul a lot of things very early in his ministry that, that manifested over the course of 25, 30 years. The same way with these guys here. They showed him a lot of things very early in the ministry that manifested over 20, 30, 40 years, 2,000 years when I think about it, that they came to understand. It wasn't because the Lord wasn't willing. It's because people are hard to move sometimes out of their thinking patterns and to see the truth. But later that week, in verse 26, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. So we've got the 12 here, which is also witnessed to in 1 Corinthians 15, 5. Now, before it mentions, it says Cephas, then the 12, and then uh, it also has James in there. I do not, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't. I don't believe necessarily that was James, the Lord's brother. There's no reason to believe that. A lot of commentaries want to say that because of when Corinthians was written. It doesn't say James, the Lord's brother, so I am not inserting that it is James, the Lord's brother. James was the brother of John also, a very dynamic man. They were the, brother, the Thunder Boys, right? Peter, James, John, they were the three that were with the Lord all the time. It's that's why I don't believe that the letter that we received, that we have in our Bible, was written by the brother of Jesus, anyways. Because number one, it doesn't say the brother of Jesus. Uh, where it says the brother of Jesus, it says about James, the brother of Jesus, and there I have no problem picking that up. But where it doesn't say it, we're very arrogant in our thinking. And uh, a lot of uh, uh, historical teachings have been mis. Uh, uh, put because of this 70 AD all fulfilled crap, uh, this predator uh, 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 concept of where we are today, and that all this stuff went away with the first century, and that we're in a totally different. I don't even know what they don't even know what the heck we're in. We're in, I don't know what we're in. They don't know what we're in either. I know what we're in. We're in the same thing the Lord left us with until He returns. So later that week, verse 26. His disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Uh, through the door, though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them. 
I mean, he's showing some pretty cool stuff here. There's a reason he could have knocked on the door. <laughs> he's 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 proving some things here about this body. Peace be unto you. And he said to Thomas, put your fingers here. <laughs> See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. That's a good confrontation, right? Thomas said unto him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen, you have believed. That's cool. Nothing wrong with that. The Lord made a special trip here to show Thomas. Nothing wrong with that. But but those these people that blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. They were, these are talking about people that the word said it, that settles it. I believe it. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that either. Matter of fact, the Lord said these people are blessed. <clears throat> they're blessed. God said it. That settles it. I believe a lot of yeah, a lot of believer homes. The young people are, are raised in the word, so they read the word and they say that's what God said. God says the flood covered the earth, and there were eight saved. I believe it. I don't. <laughs> uh, blessed are those people. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples. A summary statement here which are not recorded in this book, but these are written so that you may do what? Believe. That's right. And this, this is an action verb here. This is an action figure. Get out there and do something. It's, it's, it's having faith as a noun. You have to have a subject to that faith, which is Jesus Christ. The action that you take by that trust you have in the Lord, that you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. You will manifest that life. Once again, summary statement. Uh, Matthew 28, it says, verse 16, which we're going to pick up on next week. He finally gets the boys to where? How many of them? Galilee. How many of them? All of them. He wants all of them there. How many of them went? Eleven. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. So when we pick up the adventures next week, we're going to start singling out some of this Galilean word. Uh, also, I think this is where the 500 were gathered together in Galilee. Uh, I, I believe that this is where James got some instruction from the Lord in Galilee. Uh, I think the Lord... Uh, utilized his three amigos pretty pretty tight so that's that's where we're at right now and that's the at least we got through Sunday and we even we even jumped ahead a week huh <laughs> and got through to uh, the following Sunday so I'm good with that if you are Mr. Don absolutely okay cool that's what I got Okay. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Michael. Now, you are going away. We here are staying right here. We'll see you in fellowship after hours. Make sense?